Welcome back to HBL. We just saw ERA take a one nothing lead over Jab here. Both players coming in without a win here yet in HBL, looking to get that first win on the board. And whoever loses is looking at a long tournament ahead of them. Yeah, a lot of matches still here to play. So, you know, a couple of losses doesn't mean you're out of it quite yet, but certainly not the way that you envision starting out here in HPL. Um, we just saw Era queue up with Priest, and we've talked a little bit about when players have their back against the wall, they'll tend to favor comfortable strategies. That's exactly what he did. And it just so happens to be that, you know, Priest can be one of those strategies that works very well versus mid range decks that don't apply a lot of early pressure. Yeah, we've seen it in every game that Priest has been in here at HPL. They've been matched up pretty well. They've won almost all of their games, and their matchups have been great. Here we go into game two, Era versus Jab. Yeah, look at this Era mixing it up once again. Jab sticking to his guns, though. He says, you know what? I love this, this uh, Hunter deck. I, yeah, I love this Hunter strategy. It's what got me to number one. I'm going to continue to go with it. I cannot at all blame him for sticking to his guns here. I mean, yeah, it's the deck that got you here. It's the deck that's got you on the map. You might as well keep running with it. You play it unbelievably well. Now, from Era's side, also queuing up Hunter deck, you have to believe that maybe there's a little gamesmanship in there, thinking that Jab might make, you know, uh, a juke here. Yeah, it also could just be like, hey, you know what? You're going to play this Hunter strategy. I'm going to play it too. And you know what? I think I play it even better than you do. And a fantastic start here from Era. He's got Mad Scientist into a tremendous amount of options on his second turn. Yeah, his hand just looks great. He's got a ton of, he's got four two drops in his hand to choose from. And they turn. all do different things too. This is looking beautifully for him. You know, Iron Beak Owl is actually pretty, uh, pretty tempting here. Getting to silence any of the early minions out of Hunter, be it a Haunted Creeper or a Mad Scientist with an Iron Beak Owl is pretty good in these matchups that I found. Yeah, we're going to get a good idea of exactly how he wants to approach this game by the way he plays his turn. Again, so many options available to him. Uh, when you're playing against someone like Jab, you know, Iron Beak Owl may be one of those, one of those cards you want to keep. You, have, you couple it with a Kill Command, it takes out a Savannah High Main very well. Uh, but just going to favor the early game pressure here. Make sure he keeps the board under control. That worked for him very well in game one, and I, you know, that, that style can very easily play into this game as well. I'd like to trade here on the Beast instead of on the Mad Scientist. Make sure your opponent has you know, the ability to still draw that secret out of the deck and Hungry Crab. Now call me crazy, I don't think Air has got any Murlocs in this deck. Uh, I would really I would really be surprised if we saw a Murloc in this in this <laughs> game. So this Hungry Crab is just gonna be a one-two beast for yeah, one so mana. So it will activate some kill commands, but. Yeah, gonna have to go with Eagle Horn Bow here. Doesn't wanna be taking repetitive damage out of a minion like that. Leveraging his life total now when he can, and at the same time picking up those minion kills. You know, Jab doesn't do that a ton, but when he's forced into this position, that's what he has to do. Yeah, and you see Era with uh, mana utilization in mind there, playing the three drop on turn three, he's also already got a secret set up, so if the secret gets proc, he gets an extra value out of his eagle horn bow here. You know, we just talked about how this hungry crab might not be able to do anything, but it's contesting a trap, and it's giving him a beast in play that could potentially be used with the hound master, so this is actually not like the worst one he could have gotten. No, I think this, core hound would have been way worse. Yeah, this hungry crab's actually going to do a lot of work here in this game, hopefully, for uh, for Jab's sake, but arrow has got a pretty good turn four here. A ton of options again. He had a ton of two drops. And I like this from Hera. This very mindful of a card like Houndmaster. He knows that Jab is very prone to play a card like this and making sure that he keeps off the uh, uh, beasts off the board a very ha high priority for him. It's actually a pretty big deal in a lot of the matchups against Hunter and when you're playing in these matchups, especially against the mid-range versions that have Houndmasters, is beast control. There's board control and there's beast control. Anytime you have to choose between which minions to take off the board, it's almost always correct to make sure that you keep a beast off the board. Yeah, making sure they can't get Houndmaster value is a very important detail. Sometimes you can only prevent it for so long, but that will give you windows of opportunity to push through and make sure that you can keep your opponent out of a range of getting tremendous value from it. So, you know, a little bit of board development here. Jab has some answers to what's going on, but none of these are very clean right now. No, none of them are very clean and none of them are great. I mean, Quickshot is, it's fine getting rid of this knife juggler, but he's just going to get to hero power and pass here. Now he's going to have a good turn six. He's going to be able to play a Savannah high main, but yeah. you feel like you're giving a lot of initiative back over to Era. But Era's hand is not the greatest at taking advantage of this. Yeah, you uh, notice wall. also this explosive trap has that green border around it. That means that that's a different trap that's sitting in play right now. Yeah, nice catch there. Memorable. Yeah, so I mean, this this Houndmaster, I'm sorry, this uh, Savannah high main, two Savannah high mains now. Uh, you know, this first one could very easily get freezing trapped in a position like this, and Era has taken himself a damage lead. He's got Unleash the Hounds, he's got Explosive Trap, he's got a weapon in play, and he's got a Kill Command. He's got a very big lead. Yeah, he's got a huge lead, a lot of things to work with. 
You're gonna see Jab attack oh. here, trying to see if it's a explosive trap. He's yeah. gonna get the Savannah High Man in play. It's gonna be interesting to see how he plays this from now on, because he has to believe that is a freezing trap from here. And Era with a second secret here, gonna get a ton of value here off of his secrets over the next couple turns. Yep, swings with the Glaive Zooka so he can put the second one in play, get that extra point of damage. Jab, in this position, I have to think he's gonna have to sit behind the taunt that this uh, he's gonna get from this Savannah High Main with that Houndmaster and look to trigger these traps at a later time. But that is giving Era plenty of time to work with. And again, he's got a kill command in his hand, so this is not a, a small amount of damage that he has to be facing here. He's looking at taking seven this turn and then two more from kill command. If he can't find a way to put together enough damage to kill Era, like, Basically, in the next turn, he's going to be dead. Well, Jab's going to be able to sit behind, behind the Savannah High Main. He's going to be able to proc the trap with the Houndmaster and possibly play the Houndmaster again. But as you said, he's already at 11. Era has an Unleash the Hounds and a Kill Command. So he has a beast, even if this fighter gets taken care of somehow. And he's got a weapon in play. And he's got his hero power. He has so much damage ready to throw Jab's way. Jab is in a, a pretty precarious spot. Yeah, this cannot be comfortable from him, and you can tell he's counting up the damage this turn. Do I need to kill Command now and hope that I can draw the right cards to finish this game? He's going to favor Hero Power. Leper Gnome to extend that damage even more than he has right now. He's just going to kill Command straight away. It looks like I can't blame him for this either. Yeah, you want to make sure that you have a, you know, you're always going to have a beast in play for your kill Command, and he wants to make sure that he gets to do it on the turn now when he gets to uh, utilize his mana better. You don't want to be caught on the turn where you have to unleash the Hounds for like maybe one Hound or two that aren't going to have an effect in the game just so you can kill Command, and that's six mana, and you might not be able to do all the other things that you want. But, ooh, interesting. He's going to kill Command. Wow, he's going to you know he's gonna do this so he can utilize this Unleash the Hounds. He actually gets more damage this way because now the Haunted Creeper uh, can get through three points of damage here. Very smart play by, by Era, actually. Now there's no taunts in play. These minions are all vulnerable to Explosive Trap. He gets in that five damage now with the Haunted Creeper and with his Glaive Zooka afterwards. Doesn't get a hero power out of this, but he takes care of potentially a very big threat if he saw something like maybe Keys in Mystic or Flare. Yeah, but Jab is at six here, so... If he triggers this explosive trap, he's actually dead to what's on board from Era here. Yeah, this is just looking like it's absolutely disastrous. I don't see a single way that he can get out of this position. Yeah, it's looking really, really bad for Jab here. Well, you get Iron Beak Owl uh, secrets. <laughs> yeah, short of something like Kazon Mystic, I don't see a way that he's going to be able to get out of this game. And we've seen it in a few decks. We've seen some rogue players bring Kazon Mystic, but we haven't seen a hunter player try to really get up on the other hunter players yet with something like Kazon Mystic. Yeah, I think it's really tough to fit those kind of cards in your deck unless you have a very strong lead. Flare might be a, a better choice since it cycles at least. So if you don't get value off killing a, a, a secret, you at least get the card. But two mana for that effect to draw a card. Oh, it's not, actually oh, Snake Trap was what it was. So Jab could have potentially gotten in a swing with that Savannah High Main. Wow, what a, what a turn of events here. And now he's got to be thinking, did I miss a bunch of damage in one turn? Could I have won this game? Yeah, it looks like Jab is actually going to attack here and trigger this explosive trap, though. That's going to end up killing him. Yeah, I mean, he has no outs at this point. That yeah, and you see you see Jab just, like, shaking his head like, yep, I'm, I'm in a lot of trouble. He knows. Wow, and fantastic what, play from Era yeah, in this game. Yeah, what play from Era, just making his opponent believe that it's Freezing Trap. We believed it was Freezing Trap. I think everyone at home believed it was Freezing uh, Trap. How could it not have been Freezing Trap with the way that it was played? Great game here from Era, taking a very big lead over Jab, and now he's up two games to zero. Jab in the exact same position he was in his first match. He's got to win three straight to win this one. Just wow, what play from Era. I believe everyone in the world thought that was a freezing <laughs> trap. <laughs> very likely so. I mean, you don't see Snake Trap very often. We heard Green Sheep yesterday. Uh, he had Snake Trap in his Hunter deck, and his explanation behind it was that people play around freezing trap right now because Snake Trap has fallen so out of favor in the metagame. And when that happens, you kind of get that same stifling effect from freezing trap, where if you can control your opponent's board, you get them in a position where they play around freezing trap because they can't afford to do anything otherwise. This one, it's Snake Trap. Gets that extra, you know, forces Jab to not attack with that turn, and then still gets value out of it afterwards. I mean, he pretty much had that game won anyway, but that is, you know, a little bit of information for Jab now at this point, but Era on fire in this series. Yeah, Era on fire in the series, as you said. He's up 2-0 over Jab. He's 0-2 so far here in HPL, but looking to get his first win here in our tournament, and if he does get his first win, it's going to put Jab into the 0-2 bracket. So when we come back, we're going to have to find out who wins game three? We'll be right back. You're watching Hearthstone on PvP Live.